instead of um, Yeah, I got a new job. Uh, did some new things. Went to Yellowstone, saw some awesome shit. Went camping. So where, you, where, a, where, you got a new job? Where are you working right now? Uh, Denver Comedy Work. Sweet. Pretty awesome. Just working the door? Or? No, I started as food runner. I'm training for a server. In cool. the in the restaurant connected to the club. That's that's cool. It's pretty awesome. Get to see all the shows and stuff. Uh, you were telling me you got to go to a bunch of Tim Dillon shows, so that's pretty cool. Oh yeah. Oh, I told you. You already know I worked there, right? I didn't know you were. Uh, I didn't know that was like your full time thing now that you were. I didn't know if it was like you were just working there or what that weekend or whatever. But like that's cool. It's not full time but it's, I, I'm, it's super busy this week and then it's a little slower next week it just depends on the show but it's good money it's an awesome job no when i say busy i mean as in like uh i mean full time i mean you're employed there actually employed yeah. there. It's not like a gig not like a gig where you just yeah right yeah so that's, that's awesome man and uh yellowstone so how is yellowstone yellowstone was awesome we camped south of yellowstone because there's no camping in Yellowstone. It's all booked and shit. And we can't have dogs, really. So we camp south of it. And then we drove through Yellowstone and saw some shit. But it was, we saw Old Faithful. It was super busy. So we just continued to Bozeman and got a hotel for the night, which was super awesome. I got this hat there. I don't know if Mont I'm... Montana's pretty dope. Yeah. Boom. Oh, I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> um, stayed there for the night, and the next day I drove through East Yellowstone, and that's where we saw a bunch of cool shit. That's what this video I'm going to show you. And then we camped in the Shoshone National Forest, like at 12,000 foot elevation or something. Holy shit. It was cold. Saw some waterfalls and shit, man. God, it was awesome. I got a picture of that, too, if I could just screen share it. and, and Sure. You want, it, you want me to do it now? I mean, sure. I might as well. I'm talking Might about as well, it. man. Yeah. All right, so let me hit screen share. It's just like the, it was a three-quarter mile hike connected to the campground. Um, so you could do like three-quarter of a mile down. And then you come out to this fucking insane waterfall that connects to the river and then disappears into this canyon. Are you camping in an actual campground or just kind of in the woods? Um, an actual it's a it's a primitive campsite. So it wasn't like a big commercial campground. They only had vault toilets and like hand pumps for water. That's cool. And it was cold as fuck. This water was so goddamn cold. Look at this shit, dude. We were at these hot springs and we're walking on the boardwalk and you can see the ranger right here. He was like fucking panicking, trying to keep people. They put the cones out because we were already there, dude. What? So we got super up like wait, the The rule of thumb period is 100 yards away from so the football field away from uh, any yeah wild animals like that yeah it's playing kind of glitchy because it's fucking laptop Screen. yeah oh uh, that's bullshit man it's not playing well god damn it you just walk right up to the yeah he was just right there he was laying down at first and i swore i videoed that but trying to skip through there we go so he gets up and then all that dust that you just saw in the air was him from getting up this is supposed to be a fucking 4k 60 frame per second video <laughs> your max like not today it's not yeah it's one frame yeah so anyway I'll, i guess this is still good enough to see but he winds up yeah. walking away dude he fucking turned and showed his face at one point his face was so amazing. 
a fucking bison's face right up close. It was like a human face, but with a beard all over his face. They're so fucking huge, too. Yeah. He was pretty mellow. He was just chilling. Okay, well, I can't find the face part. So he starts walking away. This is bullshit, this fucking video. (laughs) And he goes out into the grass over here and starts eating grass. Just chilling. I went over here in the second video and got closer. You gotta be careful, careful walking up on him like that, man. Shit. You can end up like those, uh, like that little girl that got thrown. In Yellowstone, I think, actually, walked up to a bison and <laughs> charged her. That's fucked up. Just threw her in the air, yeah. Oh, there you go. Did she live? Yeah, she she lived. Tough chick. Yeah, I'd be nervous, though. It was pretty exhilarating. Come on, you fucking video. I get way closer, but it's just not loading that. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know why it's running so laggy. I'm trying to stream, like, the raw video straight from the GoPro. So that yeah, was, that one, that little video is over a gig. Yeah. Yeah, it's like four gig videos. Um, so I'll show you this more of this waterfall. I selected a video, but that's not going to be worth anything. <laughs> if you're doing this on your Mac Mini, you'd be fine, bro. Yeah, but if that you need to get a web, you need to get a webcam for it. Yeah. So this was at the trailhead, and it's going down to the left. You can see it here. Oh, yeah. That's pretty steep little uh, hike. Yeah, man, it was a steep grade. There's no fucking around. Got me getting back up wasn't that easy. No, it kicked our ass. Going down was super easy. Coming up really kicked our ass. But it was awesome. Oh, that's Mason. He was, dude, he, it was like he was on crack, this hyperactive <laughs> chihuahua. He, dude, I can't even explain how hyper energetic he was. It was insane. So the dogs had a good time, too. Yeah, dude. You had to leave, leave them um, at the campsite when you went to Yellowstone. Um, we didn't camp in Yellowstone. We just stopped at the touristy spots and left them in the van with the shade. I mean, we didn't stay that long at the spots, you know? Yeah. The longest was Old Faithful because we had to wait for that bitch to erupt. Yes, I've never... Was, I, I've been to Yellowstone when I was a little kid, but I don't remember... It's cool as shit. I don't remember much of it. But that's the waterfall. I'd go swimming in there. I got in, like, up above my belly button. Kind of where these dudes are. On the shore, there's those rocks. Joe jumped in over here. I would say, like, I would fucking swim up under the waterfall bro you say that until you get in that water it's cold it's unprecedented cold it's like <laughs> it's like it was that's like twelve thousand foot elevation in shoshone and it was just there's no heat on the water it's just it's about 40 degrees like oh, the only fuck. reason it's yeah man fuck it's all that. <laughs> it's, it's cold as fuck dude fuck the only reason that. Yeah, the, I think the only reason it's not frozen is just because it's in motion. Like if, yeah. we, if it stops, it would have to frost up. But yeah, I, was, I got down here in those rocks. I wish my computer was faster and I could scroll through these motherfuckers. There's a lot of cool shit in here. It looks like it gets kind of deep right there, too. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the video of the waterfall. Maybe it'll be uh yeah it'll screenshots of a video yeah either way that's a super cool picture yeah this place was fucking awesome dude what did Ford think the audio is playing in my headphones but yeah it's not playing no on picture my end. change anyway I'll put all what, this on YouTube what did Ford think. Ford loved it, dude. The first time going there? Uh, 
Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. She's showing her America. It was pretty cool. The camping some- was the coolest shit. Really? Setting up the tent and just, you know, being, being out, out in nature. Yeah. We you went on this. When you got back? Yeah, I was broke as fuck. I'm still trying to recover from it. Not that it was too expensive, but it was, you know. Tr- driving gas is like four bucks a gallon over there or something crazy. <laughs> yeah, 350. Fuck. And my. In Montana and shit, it was a little cheaper, three twenty, and the cigarettes were like seven bucks a pack. You smoke? I started smoking again, Damn. going through a. Uh, that's not a big deal. Come on, man. What, Get dude? Together. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I like smoking sometimes. No, I know. I used to smoke. I can't talk shit. Um. Yeah, man. But you had a baby, dude. Yeah, that's why we haven't done one of these in uh, six weeks because uh, been adjusting to new dad life. So, uh, how's it going? How- it's going good, man. A little sleep deprivation, but that's to be expected as your new parent. You know. Oh, thanks for the heart, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but no, she's doing great, man. She's super healthy. Um, I can't ask for anything more. You know. That's awesome. Congratulations, man! I can't thanks. wait to meet her. Whatever I get. Yeah. To her again. Yeah, man. She's uh she's got a little personality already. She's very she's very aware of already, even at six weeks old. Really? So that's cool. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I think she'll be pretty smart. Be a smart little baby. Yeah. How does she show that she's aware? She just looks around a lot. Yeah, like even on like day one, you know, she was open around. She was still she was tracking us, which that's not something that babies typically do super early where they'll like follow you with their eyes and their head and shit oh Uh, she was doing that within like week one so uh that's pretty cool um damn that's yeah she just she just has uh has her own little personality now um she's getting to the point where she starts to laugh at stuff and smile and things like that which is cool to see so yeah she's uh she's, she's becoming her own little person slowly slowly uh but surely Six weeks in, she's already like bubbling with personality. She is. She is. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think she's gonna be? You think she's gonna be like the next Montel, where she has like, or like the next uh, Montel? Not Montel. I'm trying to think of like, um, like a Doctor Phil, somebody who's just super aware and breaks shit down. Mm, I I don't know if she'll be a Doctor Phil. Maybe uh, Doctor Lil. Dr. Little, yeah, maybe so. She'll take Dr. Phil's spot whenever he dies. But uh, no, maybe she'll probably just be a musician if uh, if I have anything to do with it. Get her a piano real young or a little keyboard that she can start learning on, start her off on that. That way she can learn her music theory real easy on that. And Off to the and races. What, and whatever else she wants to do from there, play whatever instrument she wants. It's yeah, you are already know enough about the biz to help her out help her i wouldn't say all that but well you know skip a lot of bullshit yeah yeah well, like get a record bit, get a promo get your the, shit together and then book with that okay. the biz will be totally different by the time she's old enough to oh yeah yeah it's gonna be like okay. i mean it's already of it's TikTok. already weird right people don't i don't know people uh People aren't playing live as bands and shit nearly as much anymore. It's more about like what kind of content can you put out online and yeah. share a lot on social media rather than Yeah. Going I just place. I just saw this Twitter video of uh something that Red Red Rocks was trending and apparently like it sounded like metal bands when they said the names of who just shared the stage last night. And uh it it was EDM. It was like this. I forgot their name, and it was just these three dudes. They weren't even touching the shit. They were just like partying. Yeah. Yeah. And the place is packed. It's like, what the fuck yeah. is this show? I'm not gonna hate on it, man. It, it's. I'm it, gonna hate on it. That's fucking it's bullshit. It's not my thing. It's, not my fucking thing. Uh, I. Uh, so dumb. I mean, there. these people come to watch people literally just play trash. I mean, I'm sure they they rate the. Tra- they make the tracks, but who gives a fuck? 
Yeah, you're not performing it live. Like I appreciate all the hours of practice it takes to go watch a a good band full of badass musicians pull it off live on their actual instruments. Yeah, and improv. That's what I appreciate, right? And do stuff in the moment. Yeah. Like the computer, it's just the computer. What are you going to do? Like Press play and party. That's yeah, like repeat, oh. repeat that loop a couple more times. So weird. I don't know enough about DJing to really, I mean, I guess that's all they do is press play and let it ride, but uh, there are... I guess there is an art to it, like when you start mixing tracks together and stuff like that. Yeah. When you, uh, you know, pick pick them to go uh, into each other and like a medley, like when a band does a medley. Yeah, there's an art to that. I, I can see that. I guess. <laughs> but uh, it's not my thing. Yeah, it was an awkward video. Just three dudes not doing anything, but. Well, everyone's on uh, Molly or whatever. And the one dude was jumping like, I can't fucking believe it. And I bet it was packed. I bet it was I bet it yeah. was 9,000 people in there. But then you see the pictures of the people that posted from the crowd, and it's just the fucking mookiest the mooks. Just <laughs> one girl. I, I was about to quote retweet it, and I was like, who gives a fuck? I deleted it. I didn't do it. But she was in like a go-go outfit and put... I manifested a live concert in Red Rocks last year and it came true. What a fucking moron. Exactly. So that's who goes see three guys press play on like a table. Very low IQ mouth breathers. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'd still fuck her though. I mean, EDM chicks <laughs> are hot and they put out well, yeah, they're they're rolling all the time. Yeah. So oh, well. you know, yeah, they're horny. But uh, yeah, other than that, man, got some new gear, so that's cool. Yeah, how's that guitar amp, dude? It's fucking dude. badass, man. It is. Uh, it's heavy. I need to get. A, I get. I need to get uh, an equally good cab to go with it. What was uh, that little, red cab I saw in the picture? That was that's Jai's. That's a good cab. That's a, a Basin cab. That's Jai's cab, though. He doesn't care. Like he, he'll let me use it indefinitely. He said, but uh, at some point, I do want to replace those two Marshall 1960s I have. That fucking amp is got. It's very tight. It has a lot. Uh, you can dial in a lot of low end. I had it. I had it basically so loud, and uh, <laughs> when I was messing with it yesterday, I kept hearing a rattling. I just thought it was something in the room. It was literally rattling the fucking handle on the cab. I was like, all right, that's not good. Wow. Like, this cab is a fucking piece of shit. I need to get rid of it. It wasn't doing that in, in, uh, on uh, Jai's cab, so it was literally just the, the cab uh, being a piece of shit. But um, was, it, was it your guitar amp pushing too much juice? No, like, it was uh, just the low end that, that was coming from it was causing it to rattle. Yeah. And yeah, I had it. I had it at show volume. I was testing out like the noise gate and shit on it, just trying to see how quiet it was with that. It's pretty good. The amp itself is fucking amazing, though. It's the best sounding amp I've played on by far. Awesome! I can't wait to track some shit with it. Yeah, um, bro. When we reamp with that, it's gonna be fucking sick. It's gonna be badass. I need it. I still need to get like a flight case for it to protect it. So uh, I've been having trouble finding one that'll fit it. Though it's pretty. It's a big head. Like it's, it's deep. It's like wide like that. Is it heavy so, as fuck? Uh, I mean, it's not any more heavy than my triple uh, X was. Like it's probably about fifty, fifty or sixty pounds. So it's about average for most heads. Just big and awkward to carry. Yeah, and so uh, I haven't heard. So I heard it at practice with uh, John Zingle, and it sounded they sounded good together. But I haven't heard it fully in the mix yet because Jarek, unfortunately, has fucking COVID. So uh, he he wasn't able to show up for practice. So I haven't heard it with like a bass player and everything. He's getting yeah. it late in the game, huh? Yeah, and he's vaccinated, by the way. Wow. Um, oh, he has no symptoms. You know? I don't even know if I believe the test that he took. Do you know what I'm saying? Am I wrong? So that was, yeah. Um, 
I've been seeing a lot of stuff come out about uh, at the end of this year, the CDC is going to revoke emergency use authorization of PCR testing, uh, and they're urging uh, testing sites to use tests that can tell you whether you have influenza and COVID or not. Um, I, 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 th- I, when I first read that, I was like, well, fuck. So this whole time, this, the PCR tests that they've been using can't tell the difference between the flu and COVID. Um, and so I went and looked into it more and uh, no, that's apparently not the case. Uh, they just, they weren't testing for the flu. They were only testing for COVID. So they're, they're the official stance is that there are better tests now that have been produced that can test for both of them so that they can monitor for both of them. So that is the narrative that, that surrounds that uh, ending of the PCR testing uh, that's out right now. But I, I, when I first read it, I was like, you got to be shitting me. So this whole time they've been reporting numbers from these PCR tests that could have also included the flu in it. So we don't really know if it's, if those are the actual COVID numbers or not, but I was wrong. I still, need, I still need to research a little bit more on that, but have you looked into that at all? Um, I just know about the PCR test. <clears throat> the guy who invented PCR tests said that you can use PTR, PCR tests to test for anything in the body, no matter how much of it's in your body, because it's just the reaction to some kind of yeah, know, like po- a, a leftover chain reaction test. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's there. And just because it finds it just that, that, that you could test for I don't know diesel in the human body and you could find some leftover remnant of breathing in a bunch of like in a such a small amount it doesn't count but you if you turn it up high enough the PCR you could find anything right so there I think they're using the PCR to their advantage and calling it all COVID well so they the, stop by the end of this year apparently the so I don't even believe the test. My mom and you know people that went get the test. They left the line because it was too long, and they got an email saying they tested positive. Yeah. You know the pre- we talked about the president of Tanzania. They got offed a few episodes ago. He tested a papaya and a goat. They tested positive. They killed him. That's what they say. He went missing for three oh, weeks. They, they killed. They, they killed him. Oh, I thought you meant it killed him. Like COVID. no, I said they killed him. Oh yeah. So I just, I don't believe the test. And then that medic, the medic that came to uh, give me IV when I fucked myself up in March, he's not conspiratorial. And, and he said that what he sees in the hospital is that a lot of these deaths aren't COVID. They're just marking them off that way. And I don't remember what he said about the test, but I just don't believe everything they're, they're giving us. No, I think they're taking advantage of the situation, you know, yeah. and they're using it to implement more control, more and yeah. more, more control. And now, uh, you know, the vaccine passport uh, discussion is like really, really on fire right now. Dude, did you see what de Blasio just said? No, I did not. He said um, going door to door is over. It's time to fuck how did he say that basically it's time to force people to get vaccinated the nice stuff is over enough of the door to door enough of the waiting it's time to force people to get vaccinated probably one of the most infuriating uh things to me were was uh did you listen to that rogan episode where he had um one of the weinstein brothers was on it um, and I can't remember the doctor's name, but he was an ICU doctor and they were talking about ivermectin. Did you watch that one or listen yeah. to that one? Yeah. How fucking infuriating was all of that? It's super infuriating because hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin have studies that show it helps against COVID, but they're so easy to create in a lab because it's it, so common. You can't make money. And the people that have interest in suppressing that are the pharmaceutical companies that are pushing their vaccine and donald trump was right again you know it's, what i'm saying yeah it, well it's not even that it's easy to make in a lab it's that there's a 
you know, the, I guess the patent or whatever on it is expired. So drug companies can make it's there's You can make generic versions of it and drug companies stand to make no money on it at all. Oh yeah. So, uh, yeah. And when you find out that the company that actually made it is now about to put out another drug that is supposed to treat COVID and they're saying that it's not safe to give people. I mean, it's, it's complete insanity, man. Like I, I what's insane to me is how people all about money, all about money. It's insane to me that people can't wake up to this shit, this corruption. Like it's like, how are people not awake to it? Like there's a, podcast i listen to the guy's really smart i disagree with them on a lot it's a fight podcast but the guy's really smart um and he's like had a, had a kind of a rebellious type you know tattoos cannibal corpse this and that mm-hmm. you know and he's all about the vaccine and all about covid and all about the protocols and all about how people who don't have the vaccine are you know, just dummies and belligerent idiots and donks and all this shit. And it's like, where's the pushback? Like, where's the part where you bring up all of the corruption that's happened? It's like they, there's smart people that just don't see this stuff. And I don't get it. I'm getting to a point where I don't understand how people are still not awake to these layers and layers of I mean, Fauci's emails got released of him talking about how the masks don't work. All this evidence about how he funded Dashik and the Eco Health Alliance and how Facebook was banning people that spread that information a year ago. And now it's now it's the accepted theory. Now they're backpedaling and it's like one after the other. I just don't understand how people don't wake up and go, you know what? There's something going on here. They don't ever say that. They just say people who don't get the Mark Merritt on his podcast, all these belligerent idiots who don't want to get the vaccine. I'll get as many as I need. That's what he said. It's like, well, fuck you too, Mark. This is insane how people don't have any pushback for any of the shit that is obviously happening. I don't get it anymore. I don't understand it. Oh, it's like it goes back to what I was saying the last time we spoke, man, uh, on, on this podcast, people it's just smart. don't have that. People don't, people don't spend the time to look into it, I guess. Well, that, and they just accept getting. the narrative that is fed to them. That's what I'm just getting. accept it. And that's what um, I'm getting at with this guy. That's really smart. Is like, he does look into things and like smart people that do look into things still don't even acknowledge this whole other hemisphere of corruption when they talk about COVID and what's the truth. It's like, dude, talk about talk about the uh, it's like, talk about it. Talk about it, man. Smart people. Not like dumb people. Smart people. They, they just don't have any pushback. And that's where I'm getting like, damn, dude. This Frustrated? Is yeah. Like, bewildered. The <sighs> I mean, like the people who are upset. I was talking to a girl the other day um, and she she talked about aliens or Bob Lazar in an interview. And I was like, oh, did you hear it on Rogan? She's like, ew, gross. No, not Rogan. I was like, what's wrong with Rogan? And it was the same thing. I've heard this from like two or three different people. He just has such a large platform. He needs to be responsible with what he says. Oh, my God. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, go fuck your Go listen to Nicki Minaj's wet ass pussy where all these like young chicks are booty bopping on fucking TikTok and shit. And that's all right. Like half of like the majority of hip hop is the most disrespectful shit, but they listen to it. And Rogan has to be responsible in his plot, even though his opinion is backed by science. Talking He's about talking to actual scientists. Yeah, that's what you I'm know. saying. Like, how the fuck are people so dumb? It's, it's insane. Well, at this point, you know, it's chosen ignorance. It's easier to just be ignorant and not not fight against it. So people just go with it. Rachel Maddow gets a pass for pushing Russia gate for four and a half years and they're still going on about Russia. Oh, the January 6th insurrection. Oh my I'm so God. tired of hearing about that dumb shit. Oh my 
God. Like dude. the BLM protests were mostly peaceful while they were burning down minorities' businesses, but this January 6th insurrection where, like, one person died, rest in peace, that sucks. But, come on, this was not a fucking riot. An Didn't insurrection. Biden say it was, like, one of the most... Uh, they're using tra- it... They're using it to... God, did you watch the the testimonies of the uh, Capitol Hill police yesterday? Oh, I didn't know that happened. So they 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 they, had, they did this testimony where they, they called the uh, Capitol Police in, and it was a they were crying and they were talking about how terrified they were. And look, they I, they probably did. They had one police officer yeah, they, they probably cried and talked about how terrified they were during the BLM protests when people were getting like burned. People were just destroying shit. They didn't. They didn't do all that shit for those cops. It's they, like theater. It, that's what it, it felt a little bit like theater. And I'm not saying that nothing happened to those cops because I don't know. I wasn't there. Who the fuck am I? But it, just watching it, it felt like mm, this feels like it's almost being played up a little bit. You yeah. know. You can tell that shit. I tell. I could. I wasn't even politically awake when Obama started running for president. But I just remember turning on the TV a night before I went to bed and his speech was on running for president. So I was like, oh, let me check it out while I fall asleep. And I felt that same thing. I was like, I don't know shit about Dick, but this dude doesn't feel right, man. And that's what we got was him and Biden selling hope for eight years. Dude, we ran out of bombs. So we bombed the Middle East so much. Yeah. Broke, broke drone record bombs, covered it up. You know, that's where they instituted CIA torture and covered it up at Guantanamo and all kind of shit. It's like this dude is just like all the rest, but everyone ate, sucked his dick off. They still do. Well, and you know, with the January 6th shit, here's the kicker. The FBI was probably involved in that whole thing. They had yeah, FBI didn't they escort operatives. people through? They had FBI operatives that may have helped organize and also participated in the, in the breach of the Capitol. Like, we yeah, don't like, know how many. We don't know. Like, that's what we need to be looking into. Like, if the FBI... Was that- was that part of the testimony? Fuck no. Fuck no. It's just all about how, you know, how bad Trump is for riling those folks up and getting them sent into the Capitol. But the FBI had already infiltrated, you know, the Proud Boys, the Oath Keepers, and the Three Percenters, and were working behind the scenes um, as informants. Yeah, I with these believe groups. It. And That's COINTELPRO 101. Like that oh, yeah. Didn't end. But that I don't believe that came up yesterday. Nope. Um, which the you know the Capitol Police should be fucking pissed off at their own government if that's true. Like if the FBI really did help set that up and organize oh, yeah. that. Yeah, and like you know, I mean, going back to the pallets of bricks that were laid around, and then, yeah. then people are like, "Oh, it belonged to construction sites." It's like, dude, construction sites aren't going to leave their material laying around. There's where there's no construction they're not gonna go drop it off like that stuff wasn't there the day before there's you video fucking, of you work construction like, you, i mean you, you you have in the past like yeah right, the so. construction materials at the site behind blockades it's not in the road the day before they know protests are going to be near all these businesses but like i understand you're making connections blah 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 you don't know where it is or where it came from but it's like you do but at the same time there is absolutely no evidence to suggest it's for a construction site. But that's what people run with on the basis that you have no evidence for saying they planted it. It's like, are you fucking dumb? Are you fucking dumb? Well, look at the uh, also the kidnapping, uh, the planned kidnapping of uh, Michigan's governor. Planned kidnapping? Well, when they were planning to kidnap her. Remember when all that was going down? Oh. And they pinned it on. Yeah, well, there was this there was this foiled plot where they were going to uh, this group of people were going to kidnap uh, Gretchen Whitmer and. Gretchen Whitmer, they, that's a name that sounds like she needs some dick. Well, it's 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 the it's the governor, of Michigan. Yeah, she definitely needs. Some and uh, they framed it up as like these crazy Trumpers were getting together to go kidnap the governor because they weren't happy with the COVID policies and this and that. Turns out most of the people involved in that were FBI informants and FBI agents. But the damage has already been done. Oh, it's done. Dumb yeah. People who don't know that corruption exists. 
I think about this shit every day. People, smart people I'm close with that have said things that make my jaw drop. I can't like, like people like Fauci get to his position because he's passionate about his job. Like these are the best people in the world. That stuff blows my mind when people are like, no, they're at the top because they're passionate about their job. That's what people believe. Like they don't have a concept that these people are compromised and planted and all that shit that's hard to explain because it's so simple. I mean, look at, uh, so I, I told you to go check out the, the video of him and Rand Paul getting into it at that Senate hearing, right? Yeah, I loved that. And Rand, and Rand was pushing him. He was pushing him on you know, NIH funding the Wuhan lab. And bro, the only thing that is you- Rand Paul the Kraken? The Kraken. Is, is he the Kraken that that lady uh, said that we're going to release? I don't know. Um, I don't know what lady you're talking about. But yeah, all I saw on the the little morning shows and everything the next day after that was basically like the mic drop moments from Fauci where he's like, and quite frankly, you don't know what you're talking about. That's yeah. all they should. They didn't show any. They didn't cut to like Rand actually pushing Fauci. They were they 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 framed it as oh well Fauci put him in his place, you know big it was it was so is gaslighting one hundred percent you know that's gaslighting yeah um it was so crazy to me that that no one around me was was like hey you know what the media is being kind of shady with this particular story like nope they just they just took it and ran with it. Like oh yeah, Fauci know. showed him. Yeah, yeah, Fauci sure showed him. That guy, Rand Paul, guy's an idiot, right? When he's not, he's a fucking. He has a medical degree. He knows what he's talking about. On the spot, actually, Fauci was changing the definition of what gain of function research was. He's like, no, I, we did not partic participate in gain of function research. And Rand's like, uh, so taking a virus and making it more transmissible is not giving it. Uh, is not gain of function research like now you're changing the definition didn't he have a document to show what his definition originally uh, was about he had like something on the screen he was showing him yeah i don't know but it, it was just amazing to me that the the way the media handled that interaction it's amazing they showed, they showed one side of it in this little quick uh sound bite clips with that they could grab where they, where they made Rand paul look real dumb and that was it. They ran with that story. <clears throat> and who who actually, who's going to take the time and actually go watch the whole clip and watch the whole interaction between the two of them? Not many people. Me and you will. But most people be like, yeah, that Rand Paul guy's a fucking moron. You know, Fauci sure showed him. It's amazing to me. <laughs> that, yeah, that, and Fauci got... The gain it, of function research was suspended. And then at the end of the Trump presidency, he unsuspended it like without much notice because there was so much chaos in the mm -hmm. Trump's cabinet. No one noticed. Oh, we, so, we did a whole fucking episode on it. We, we yeah. know that he funded it, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the money definitely made its way to the Wuhan lab through these backdoor channels funded by the NIH. And uh, yeah, he does. He does not want to get that. Doesn't want to let that out. I I had I think I saw on Twitter uh, that they are now. Um, he's got to go to court for that shit now. Fauci oh, does. Yeah. Okay. But I haven't seen that anywhere on the news either. Or Bro, he's gonna media. die from COVID. Watch, he's gonna die from COVID before he has to testify. Or Bro, if you if you get that right. That, that will be amazing. I think the prosecution lawyer, something like that, is going to, somebody's going to die from COVID that has all the stuff to take him down or Fauci himself. Hey, did you see on Fox News, I saw something? Maybe it was Photoshopped and I shouldn't say anything, but it was a really good Photoshop job. But basically, Fox News had President Kamala Harris typed in the tag at the bottom like as their news sticker. Mm -hmm. They didn't call her vice president, called her president. Well, I might be closer to the truth than we think. It might be a, a Dick Cheney, George Bush situation going on in the White House right now. Yeah. 
pretty sure there is. Yeah. Because yeah. Biden, he 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 could barely string a sentence together. Yeah, he, remember he said at the beginning when he got voted in that someone asked him a question, and he said, "I'll probably just die of a disease, and Kamala Harris will take over." Remember he oh, said that? I don't remember that. But... He said that. He said that in a video. I remember I shared it with a friend. I was like, ha, 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 check this out. And I know I shared it with you. You probably just don't remember. But he said, it was like a little funny Biden clip. He was like, oh, I'll probably just die of a disease and have to resign. Or I'll get sick with the disease and make me resign. And then Kamala. Like, see, this is what I'm fucking talking about right here. Good stuff. Yeah, that's she's probably running shit behind the scenes. Yeah. Because like I said, he, he seems like he can't even put a full sentence together. Do you think he sexually harasses her? Like grabs her by the pussy in the hallway? Like he did that one journalist who it got covered up because one of the people for the Me Too movement, one of the head people is in his cabinet. It's like his lawyer or something. So like it never got talked about and the story got suppressed and other journalists came out and said it's not true. But he like straight up grabbed this lady by the pussy in the hallway and then when she denied him, he said he insulted her, said, like, you're nothing to me, and then walked away. And, like, her actual testimony of it is pretty crazy. And I didn't know. Uh, yeah, but the, I missed that. Um, the Me Too, I forgot the journalist's name. It'll probably be hard to find if you use Google. Well, I'm just going to duck that go. Yeah. Biden sexually assaults. Might have been his press secretary, uh, his secretary, somebody, but she, she tried to come out with it, and then it got squashed the fuck up. And I think someone else, a couple other people, came out with, with it as well to back her up, but she had already been smear campaigned. Okay. Biden already denied it. Kara Reid, a former staffer. Yes, yes, yes. During the 2020 election campaign for president of the United States, in March of 2020, Tara Reid, a former staffer in Biden's U.S. Senate office, alleged that Joe Biden sexually assaulted her in 1993 in a Capitol Hill office building when she was a staff assistant in his office. Damn. Uh, uh, this Wikipedia article is already trying to painter as a fucking idiot reed has misrepresented herself and her life experiences on numerous occasions including lying under oath and in court proceedings well i'm sure biden's fucking done that too uh for example she falsely claimed to hold a bachelor's degree um, and falsely stated that she had worked as an online visiting professor as a member at that college so she lied about her credentials Tara Reid lied about her credentials? That's what this Wikipedia article is stating. Uh-huh. So the, the, the reason they're putting that in there is to, I guess... But you think she's a liar and she's probably lying. Well, they, they want you to think that she's a liar, yeah. Awesome. I love Wikipedia. She, cause she, she lied about something at one point in her life, so she lies about everything. Apparently. Wikipedia is good for basic facts, like when was England founded as a country? Like how old is... When's Biden's birthday? So I started reading that book. I don't know if you remember. We covered Mm -hmm. that article called Biden's Love Affair with the CIA. And it mentioned William Casey. It's a few episodes back. I think it was. I remember remember the name William Casey. I bought a book that he wrote called The Battle Against Hitler or the fight against Nazis, but he writes about his rise in the business, basically. And he basically started the CIA. He was the first guy to start an intelligence branch in London at a lawyer's office where they ran London's intelligence branch. So he started the intelligence branch there and his whole belief is that intelligence is key for winning wars. And when he tried to gather all the intelligence and, and make make that branch to where they can get intelligence from all the pieces of the army and mm-hmm. have highly skilled minds and this and that to break down the intelligence, that's basically what he did. And all the military pushed back and like, we don't want to 
we're not into intelligence, basically. Um, so he said they knew about Pearl Harbor because that's when Pearl Harbor happened was because that's when he was trying to get information from the branches they weren't working with them. So all of these information and um, recordings of or was it France and Japan or Japan and somebody somebody said that they basically knew the Japs were on their way. Mm -hmm. Japanese. I didn't mean to call them Japs, but <laughs> Japanese are on their way. And that didn't make it to anybody because the information got withheld and siphoned here and not interpreted, basically. So he was like, they knew this attack was going to happen, but I wasn't. They weren't letting intelligence be a part of this part of warfare. So that's kind of William Casey, but I'm kind of skeptical as to like this positive light he sheds on intelligence. So I'm looking forward to getting deeper in the book. But already it's like, whoa. There yeah. we go. That's how Pearl Harbor happened. I wonder who wanted that shit to happen. Why wouldn't the military be interested in intelligence? Um, and then they get attacked on their own soil because they were like not interested in... Which that kind of kicked off the whole military industrial complex. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, because I mean, that's the story. Those uh, companies made a bunch of fucking money manufacturing. Yeah, that's the story uh, of the timeline the of all the shit that's happened is FBI having the intelligence and it not getting where it needs to go. Nine eleven. It's all about money, Dylan. Well, it's always all about money, bro. It's about money, and it's about letting this shit happen so that we can get into wars. And it's back to all the dumb which, fucking people which that believe the it. wars, the wars give them money and power. Yeah, exactly. It's about the money and heroin. So that's why we can't. Uh, that's why we are not being told about drugs that actually work against this fucking virus because it's about the money. Yeah, I, I was reading Pfizer is going to they've up their projections of what they're going to make from these vaccines by 29 percent. You know how much money they're going to make in, on these vaccines over this course of this year? What? Thirty three billion dollars. Wow. See, and the people don't care about the money they're making because billion dollars to us. It's free. So people aren't thinking about them making money. You know what I'm saying? But like, we're, yeah, they're making money. They're though. making money. Like, it's it's really brilliant. Give it to them for free. They won't think about profits, but we're going to make a shit ton because somebody still has to buy it. Right. So, it's. So. We're getting fucked, Dylan. Yeah. Yeah. We're All of us are getting fucked. fucked. We're getting double fucked because if we talk about it now, we're like, ugh, gross. Ugh, gross. Right. <clears throat> we're. All right. Crazy conspiracy theorist. Crazy conspiracy theorists that have been right the whole time. And then the censorship around all of it is kind of amazing too. And then people you don't give Biden. a fuck people don't give a fuck about that either. <laughs> you saw Biden is stepping it up and he's gonna start watching SMS texts and emails. I sent you that. You sent me that, yeah. Yeah, I sent you that. And this is all based off of like it's all <clears throat> it connects to the January sixth riot insurrection too, because people are using that they're using it as a launch pad for tracking individuals in america and that's kind of what's helping put this over it's always these false flag events that yeah. help them implement the next level of what they want to do you know it's people are fine with it like oh you know what we need a we need to catch the domestic like domestic terrorism now yeah is going to be their excuse to Im increase monitoring on the entire population. Yeah. Uh, it's And not it's even scary. just monitoring, but intense consequences for right. reaching whatever, because we have hundreds of FEMA camps around the country with barbed wire facing inside of the fence to keep people from getting out. What are they going to do with all these unused FEMA camps, Jesse? Is this where they're going to put everybody in 10 and 20 years? when they get this monitoring COVID domestic terrorist thing down to a T because we're still in war in, in the Middle East. No one gives a fuck. 10 to 20 years more of this, they're going to be fucking shit up over here. No one's going to give a fuck. Like it's in play right now. <clears throat> it's pretty crazy. People don't care. They think that, you know, 
people are these uh, these people are bigots that need to be silenced, and they're saying things that I don't like, so we should silence them. But they, what people don't realize is that's always a moving target. That's a moving yeah, target. because if a republic a Republican gets in, which eventually a Republican will get in, like a liberal is okay with it because it's the right wing. It's ne- it's never the left silenced too far. Yeah. It's always anything connected to like the right wing. Um, which not that if you are balls deep in 9-11 or the Epstein scandal that you're right wing, but that's how it's painted and everything is about attacking the right. And so if the right gets in, the left is fucked. And I'm looking forward to that day. I'm not a right winger, but I can't wait till a Republican gets in and it's just all these, Perverse everybody sports. pushing Russia gate now gets banned. You know what I'm saying? That's what yeah. I'm looking forward to. Yeah, it's a move, but they, they don't get that it's a moving target. Right. Like you said, a Republican gets in office and then um, they're all going to be shitting themselves whenever people that they uh, admire and look up to start getting pulled from social media and banned from social media. And then then they'll be crying First Amendment. Right. All along the way. But that ship will have sailed at that point because we just let it slide during all of this. And regardless of whether you agree with what the person's saying or not, we should all be big proponents in this country of free speech. Yeah, yeah it's a slippery and, slope when you take it away because in Saudi Arabia, that's where they're at now is what like what Biden's talking about, monitoring people's text messages. In Saudi Arabia, it's not even text messages, it's Twitter. And they go find you and they arrest your ass. I like saw those, a fucking tweet but, about Saudi Arabia. So, this fucking liberal guy was like, it was uh, a news headline talking about how Saudi Arabia is now going to require proof of vaccination before you can like go to public spaces, use public transit, uh, go to sporting events, like basically leave your fucking house. You have to have proof of vaccination. And he's like, oh, look, Saudi Arabia is now more progressive than America. Do you realize how fucking stupid that that is for you to say? Saudi Arabia is now more progressive than America because they're requiring vaccine passports, basically. Like the progressivism is like truly flipped upside down in the literal sense. Like it is the original conservatism. And like young people are so dumb because they're too busy going to Red Rocks to watch three fuck faces dance in front of a computer. And that's... Religion. Literally what's taken the world down is really dumb 26-year-old white chicks and the dudes that can't get laid. That's yeah, what's ruining the world. The whole thing is a religion now. Yes. Like, p- p- politics have taken over religion. <laughs> I guess really dumb white guys are ruining it too, but you, you kind of yeah. got to wonder if they're FBI uh, agent provocateurs like the fucking dude that ran in like those wearing the bullhorns mm-hmm. in the Capitol riot. I mean, he's pretty dumb too, but I'm I'm pretty sure he was prompted or scouted by FBI and used. Or maybe he was, I mean, either, yeah, prompted and scouted by FBI and used, yeah. Um, okay. it, yeah, it's, it's depressing. Hopefully Lillian is so smart, she's going to like break the game one day. I hope so. I'm not going to let her get brainwashed by all this shit, though. That's for sure. You're going to be the crazy dad that talks about politics and yells at the TV. And then one day when she's older, she's going to understand. Oh, you know what? That's true. I probably <laughs> I do this shit all the time. When I see something on the news. I'm like, they're fucking they're lying fu- to you. <laughs> they're lying to you. Hey, I'm going to refill my coffee and my water. All right. And I'll share some shit on uh, Giants. Okay. Yeah, let me go. I'm going to go fill my water, too. I'll be right back. All right. All right. So you found some shit about Giants? Yeah, well, I read that those two books I sent you, The Omega mm-hmm. Conspiracy. Um, and basically, man... The Omega Conspiracy book, it was good. Free PDF download, you can find it online. It was like a biblical assessment of what's going on with UFOs. It was written in the 80s, so it's a little outdated, but still super accurate and interesting. And the premise of the book was, 
is the modern UFO sightings connected in any way to the ancient recorded UFO sightings? More specifically, the Nephilim from the Bible. Are you familiar with the Nephilim? Uh, give me a rundown. So, according to the Bible and other ancient texts, it's recorded that beings came from heaven in these little crafts. They didn't mm-hmm. use crafts. They didn't have the language. This is what ancient people record. Um, and created man. And more specifically, those beings got with strange flesh, as it's said in the Bible. And the strange flesh interprets to one that's not your kind. So those extraterrestrials mated with the women of Earth. The greys. And they gave birth to giants, the Nephilim. And the Nephilim were the offspring of the procreation between women of Earth and the extraterrestrials. Yeah, and the extra you get into fallen angels and the ones that God banished from heaven on Earth, shit like that. So that was what this book was breaking down was Nephilim, what it means, biblically biblically this and biblically that. And it was super fucking fascinating because um, God, according to the Bible, sent some of the fallen angels, Lucifer's buddies. Oh, they basically had a plan to dilute the pure seed of God's lineage, which was by mating with humans and getting their seed into the lineage. Cain and Abel, two brothers in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Cain was an offspring, according to this book and the Bible, Cain was an offspring of those bad relations. And Abel was part of the pure... It's hard to remember the details that help it make sense, but that connects to Cain and Abel. And which is why, like, one of them killed the other. Um, So, anyway, are the new UFO sightings, them coming back, is it connected to the Nephilim? Who are the Nephilim? The Nephilim are giants. God banished some of the fallen angels or extraterrestrials who were laying with strange flesh because they would call the daughter, the sons. the sons of God and the daughters of man. And it broke those two terms down. The sons of God are like the sons from the pure side of the lineage and the daughters of man or something is like the offspring of the women who fuck the extraterrestrials. That makes more sense if you read it. And Tartarius, are you familiar with Tartarius? No. It's a uh, Tartar. It's like an ancient continent or people. I've heard some podcasts of people breaking it down. It's like part of Atlantis and Lemuria, and there's like Tartaria way back in the day. But in the Bible, it says that God banished the fallen angels to the land of Tartarius. It's like, holy shit, look at this. It's coming up in the Bible, the Nephilim. And Tartarius, according to the Bible, was basically hell but it was beneath the earth how does that what's the interpretation of that beneath the earth hollow earth baby oh yeah so that's what's living in the hollow earth are these reptilian like and they're nocturnal they only come out at night biblically speaking they're like they they live in the darkness, you know, they're night creatures. Hmm. We need to go fucking find us like a hollow earth hole, Dylan. Bro, let's Somewhere. cover this. Let's cover this Omega conspiracy book as our part two of Phil Schneider because we were going to go into hollow earth. Let's do it. 
Um, but it was really fascinating about Nephilim and the Giants, and I have an article because you know we have giant bones. And I saw the pictures that you sent of like the giant bones. Yeah, but it's, they just don't talk about it. They're not put in museums. They're confiscated. And uh, I'll go ahead and share this article. But look at this shit, man. Are the fall are the Nephilim the fallen angels themselves, or the offspring of fallen angels and earthly women? I'm trying to smoke a joint, so I'm just going to take my time and relight it because it's getting kind of sticky. You good? So Genesis 6-4. Uh, there were giants on earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. The sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. So those were the sons of God, the extraterrestrials that came down to earth uh, or something. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which are of old men of renown. These were the people that had all the technology and the smarts that they transferred to us, which is also recorded in uh, ancient. Yeah, yeah. it's like carbon to that. They yeah. were old. So, oh, the lineage from the book. I'm so glad I remember this. The lineage of the sons of God was... Um, fuck. Noah was the fourth in line, and that's how Noah got the information that a big flood was going to happen. Because the super smart men of renown, his father I think was Enoch and the, above him was Methuselah and then above him was a fourth of like Edoch or something so Noah was of that lineage of the sons of God hmm. and there's also Methuselah lived to be like 999 years and it talks here about how they were old men of renown these sons of God these uh, whatever very interesting you know and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak. That's who the original guy is. Anak had Methuselah, had Enoch, had Noah. Which came of the giants, the sons of Anak. Which came of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. This is amazing. Not that the scriptures haven't proven these giants. Okay, that's not part of the scripture. Check out these fucking giant skeletons, man. Holy shit. And that's a giant skull. Bro, that skull is as big as a human squatting. Holy shit. Look at that. Why isn't that in a museum next to the T-Rex? <clears throat> Where is that photo from? I'm trying to zoom right in, there. but I can't zoom I see. in. I'm guessing that's somewhere in the Middle East. Yeah. Um, looks like these towns are labeled like a different language. I can't zoom in. I don't know. I don't fucking know why. Look at that skeleton, baby. Holy shit. See, that one I thought could have just been like a perspective thing. What do you mean? <clears throat> Skeleton's really close to you, but the guy's a little further back than what you realize. But... I don't know. Then I was trying to. I was. I'm. All, I always go into these things like, how can I try and debunk it, right? And that's the only thing I could think with that. That's a huge skull. That's a huge, huge skull. Yeah, man. That book I have, the Denisovans. That new stuff they're finding in Russia, giant bones. Mm hmm bracelet on the woman with a hole drilled so perfectly they know it was done with a power drill just because of the, the microscopic mm -hmm. markings. Enoch and the Nephilim, who are the Nephilim? Of all the imaginable phenomena on Earth, the progeny of this union between extraterrestrials and humans is the most bizarre. Etymological evidence. Clue to their identity is found in their name Nephilim. The word itself is Hebrew and it is first used in Genesis 6-4. There were giants on the earth. I just read that. Mm -hmm. Nephilim is translated giants in the authorized King James Version, but giants is in no way a complete description. Nephilim translates to the root Nifal, meaning distinguished. distinguished corresponds with the men of renown. It's not a generally accepted translation. 
uh, Hebrew consonants are NPL, as found in Psalm 58.8. Here it means miscarriage. Except in this theory, the Nephilim would be those superhuman beings that resulted from miscarriages. Genesis Rabbah seems to confirm this translation when it states... Genesis Rabbah 26.7, I guess that's the Jewish Genesis. Uh, it states, Nephilim denotes that they hurled the world word down, themselves fell, Naflu, from the world, and filled the world with abortions, Nephilim, to their immorality. That's believable. Nephilim to Hebrew root word, Nephal, meaning to fall. It's, fa it's fascinating shit, though. That right? is I'm, fucking fascinating. What is, what was going on? I mean, I'm not I'm not like I used to be, where I think ancient texts are dumb cavemen who were just bored. Dude, I I told a guy at work the other day because he was like, "Oh, I like Egyptian shit too." So I was like, "Okay, have you heard of the Dogon tribe of East Africa from five thousand years ago?" He's like, "No." Uh, you know the Dogon tribe? They predicted series A and B, their size, their orbital speed, their location in the sky, what they're made of, and Sirius C. And we didn't discover Sirius C until long after discovering it on their tablets and knowing where to look. So he was like, what? I was like, yeah, like how did they know this stuff? And he was like, well, they didn't have anything to do. So for like 200 years, they, he literally said, he literally said this, dude. He literally said this. They just kind of guessed it by doing math and stuff. Mm. Okay. Yeah, and, and then he was talking about the pyramids, and he was like, they just dragged them with ropes and pulleys. I was like, okay, I'm not sure. Mm. Okay. Not sure. Uh, but I told him, I was like, they tried to do that in, a, in like a tribe in Ethiopia or something in the Puerto Rico in like the 90s, it was like 8,000 tribal members volunteered to try to haul 50 ton stones, whatever they could find, like as far as they did with the pyramids and then stack them. And like they had to abandon the project because so many people were getting killed. And I told him that. I was like, it's like oh, that's, a, that's a theory, but they've actually tried it and it doesn't work. Like we still don't know how they built it. And he's like, yeah, but they do know because like they show them using ropes and pull-ups. Like, I just, like, I had to you just, just smile. debunk your, your argument, bro. Yeah, and it's like people from politics, like we were talking earlier, to everything, they have this real surface view of what stuff is. And when you just hit them with, you know, the cutting edge of the latest, what science is finding, they just don't, they don't believe it. It's so, it's so wild. But I, I let it go. I was like, okay. Like, I'm getting used to conversations taking those turns. And I'm just getting yeah. really good at going, okay, yeah, maybe so. And just changing the subject. But it's like, fuck me in the dick. Um, Moving on. Man, so, uh, yeah, this giant thing in the Bible is a real thing. And I didn't, why don't they put two and two together? You think of like David and Goliath. Like, yeah. But Goliath said he was, was only a like, fucking giant, right? Yeah. He was like nine foot tall. That that didn't, never seemed too big to me. Maybe it was nine cubits or something. Well, nine foot tall is that's a giant. But yeah, I I, I didn't even but really think the, about that too much or put much thought into that. Like they do talk about giants and shit in the Bible. Yeah, and like they find bones. Like where did that go? And UFOs so are, exist, so we have to consider the reality that maybe they were seeing these things and describing them in ancient text which seems the most practical to me not just some dumb people because if you're a hunter gatherer if you're just living off the land you don't have time for this shit the the only time you find uh structures like pyramids and people with sophisticated knowledge on something it's only because they have the funding and the ability to focus time on that and that comes with advanced societies it's like they, they, they can't both exist where it's just dumb people in a cave to like decide they wanted to build a pyramid yeah or writing a crazy mythology book like 
like a fiction. Like they're just writing these fiction novels that happen to be accurate to every other fiction novel every culture wrote in ancient times too. It's like this is these aren't dumb people that are being bored. These are advanced societies that know shit and are documenting what they saw. And it's plausible that this stuff happened thousands of years ago. If you forget about the fact that the older you get, the dumber we get. Like that's what people think. It's this linear it's like, well, we're older, so we're not smart, so it's definitely not aliens or just dumb people writing books. But with the UFOs I mean, being enough, confirmed... Yeah, I, and there's like enough this, evidence in, like, uh, ancient carvings and ancient texts that there well, was interaction between some advanced all-knowing being and humans on Earth at that time. And, uh, you know, if you look at, like, uh, Graham Hancock's stuff, like... There's a lot of like uh, art in these ancient sites that it basically depicts the human being gifted like a bag or something, uh, something that represents knowledge, I guess, at that time. Sorry, someone's ringing my doorbell. My dog is going crazy. My bad. That's what my dog does, too. But yeah, so there's a lot of uh, evidence out there that from all different parts of the world that at one point in time, um, they were visited by higher intelligence and uh, gifted you know, knowledge of the way the world works. So yeah, this is like a consistent narrative of the yeah, and different man. parts of the world all over the world. Yeah, and like these tablets and shit that they write are under the context of the origin of humanity. It's not even like stories. This is their origin stories. So it, the, them all telling the same story, proven. It's just hard to, it's hard to mock and dismiss it like most people do. Well, and more and more evidence is coming out that's... uh showing them that's well showing that we had civilizations that were around and were advanced far longer ago than what we initially thought yeah i mean look at go black go blacky teppy go beckley teppy go blacky teppy beckley the l is at the k whatever Let's figure that out. Let's figure that out because maybe it is blecky. I'm still screen sharing, but I'm going to read something from this thing right here. Go Beckley Tepe. Oh, where's my money? You were right. But I find this stuff totally believable that thousands of years ago, aliens came here fuck the hot women that lived here all the cultures wrote down the story in their tablets and called them gods because yeah, they mean, taught us they, they taught us everything how the fuck are people gonna figure this shit out when they're busy surviving yeah they're, they're not I mean, we're like just worried about uh making it to the fucking next day not doing yeah, advanced they're... mathematics and physics and looking at uh the stars yeah there's dinosaurs roaming the earth and you're out in the middle of the night with this thing just looking just making yourself bait mapping the stars finding sirius c because you guessed get the fuck out of here yeah i that's totally a, that's a much more unbelievable um, yeah. story than aliens providing that knowledge to us yeah, I like at the Bible as an ancient text that has been taken out of context and people create a religion around it and people misunderstand what's said so they think it's fantastical. You know, that's what I've always thought was like it's all bullshit. But now like rereading some of this stuff, it's it's like it's just the recording of the of the origin of shit. Like this right here. Uh, the progeny of these Nephilim went under various names. Like this from the Bible right here is not fantastical. It's just a, a historical recording of what is. If you fucking... Right. So we read of the Anakim descended from Anak in Numbers 1328. Anakin Skywalker 
why is he walking in the sky and why is he named right after Anak? You know what I'm saying? That's weird. So the Rephaim descended from Rafa, which now you're getting into what sounds like the Egyptian legacy of Ra, the sun god. Uh, the Zamzumimans, the Zamzumans, the Emims, the Avams, etc. All share, all shared the characteristics of being huge, tall, and strong. Rabbi Baya ben Asher, a Spanish Kabbalist, claimed the Nephilim were heads of the family, called sons of God. They were so called because terror fell on those who saw them. As the virility of the stock declined, they were called Anakim and later Rephaim. Here's an Old Testament description of the Emim. This is Deuteronomy 2, 10, and 11. The Emim dwelt therein in times past, a people great and many and tall as the Anakim, which also were accounted giants as the Anakim. But the Moabites called them Emims. Like, that's just the historical document that people forget about because they don't believe that Jesus made a bunch of fish and wine. Which maybe if Jesus had some of them secrets... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What did they know? Can just molecularly duplicate stuff. They're probably paraphysical, which is what Omega Conspiracy gets into also. The aliens, it's like they can alter their molecular structure so they can be non-physical and physical. Just to account for how they can travel from other planet systems that are 25,000 light years away. It would take them 25,000 years traveling at the speed of light. Like fundamentally, if they're visiting us from other planets, they have to have some kind of paraphysical property where they can space jump. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So if, if there were secrets like that, just saying maybe, based on science, maybe. Jesus could have duplicated some fish and bread for some hungry people. Maybe. And this stuff is this stuff is amazing to me. This whole giant thing. So numbers thirteen. Fucking, yeah, I I just read I through read that one earlier. Uh, yeah. Uh, here's Deuteronomy three eleven. The the his talking about the size of his bed. Oh, look at this. Flavius Josephus, the noted Jewish historian of the first century AD, described these giants as having bodies so large and countenances so entirely different from other men that they were surprising to the sight and terrible to the hearing. And he adds that in his day, the bones of the giants were still on display. Hmm. First century AD. That was at the time Herodotus was outlawing Christianity, which was paganism, which was the original practice. God. Yeah, the first century. He did that in 34 AD, and this was the first century. So, like, all in that time, they were doing a big cover up of what was and creating a new is. Wow. Isn't that crazy? This and like, is crazy. The Vatican's still in mega control. So, Deuteronomy 311 for only Og, the king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. Is it not in Rabath of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it after the cubit of a man. So a man is one cubit? Or a super king-sized bed. In modern measurements, it was 18, 18 feet. Six inches long, eight feet, four inches wide. So that's what I have pushed back about David and Goliath because he was only nine feet tall. And maybe that's like a, a maybe a, a story that they want to push. That way people don't really think giants are giants. They're just nine feet tall. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nine feet tall is a giant. There's uh, no one, yeah, but it's not. There's, no one, on, there's no one on earth that's nine feet tall. But it's not. But it's not 18 feet tall. That's totally. Different. If you teach people that Goliath was 18 feet tall, it's a different story. Nine feet, you can just kind of, oh, whatever. It was just a big guy. That's how I always thought of it. Like that motherfucker is just a tall. You know, they got eight foot tall basketball players, like seven foot five and six. That's not. You know, one good pregnancy away from making that motherfucker nine foot. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but nine, no, dude. Not like, 18 dude. foot, though. That's giant. Nine foot is giant, too, though, Dylan. That, that's what I'm telling you. Like, that's it's crazy. Have you ever stood next to a seven foot tall person? No, I'm just saying that it's not 18 foot. They didn't want to put 18 foot. 
Well, like, I mean, the bed could be 18 feet. That doesn't mean the giant, the, the person was 18 feet long, you know? Do you have a bed that's twice as long as you? No, but my like, bed is if, definitely longer than me. Yeah, but it's just a couple feet. Sure. Maybe he was I, 12 foot. Maybe he was 12 foot. I know that nine foot is big. Yeah. No, but the no. David and Goliath story doesn't seem impressive because nine foot. Nine foot's fucking huge. But it's it, that's it. It's just fucking huge. It's not like eight, 18 feet. If Goliath, like what was Goliath, a teenager giant? He was just nine feet. He was like, that's me being almost six foot. And then some record of somebody being three three feet tall. I mean, that's different, you know? That's different. Yeah. I mean, that's wow. a, so I just think maybe they didn't want to put that giant at 18 feet. They wanted to use the Bible to scrub giants away. I don't know, man. Maybe so. But like I said, I've been around like seven foot tall people and just like fought. Like, I know. I get you're, it. They're you're big. literally a fucking giant. So I can imagine someone two foot taller than that. Like, oh, my God. I've been around Shaq. Shaq is not eight foot uh, yeah, but he's tall. Not eight. Imagine being around an 18 foot person. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. It's It wouldn't fit in my house. But that's the difference in the story of Goliath. Is that if... Because people think giants are only nine foot based on Goliath. But when you look at science and what they found and know, that's only half of the truth. Literally, like giants are actually... It, it could be a more mind-blowing story in the Bible, but it's not. It's by yeah. design. It's just like, yeah. well, that's fucking huge. It's not like, oh my god, 18 feet. I mean, that dude could change a ceiling tile in in a in the center of a church auditorium. Just, yeah, 18 feet's huge. Yeah. Well, now I'm going to go do giant research. Yeah. Oh, these giants were not confined to the Middle East. Two dozen human footprints of abnormal size have been found in the Paluxy Riverbed, Texas, some of them measuring 18 inches long. Other giant markings have been discovered in such diverse places as Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and California. In the Mount Vernon area of Ohio, Wilbur G. Burroughs, Geological Division of the Bureau College, Kentucky, too long of a name. Reported finds of human footprints 23.75 centimeters long and 10.25 centimeters wide. Antelope Springs, Utah, 68, 1968. Two human footprints 32 centimeters and 11 centimeters wide. Dude, that's fucking crazy. But, like, they're not talking about that on National Geographic. They're still doing Shark Week. Who gives a shit about Shark Week? We should be talking about giants and hollow earth. Yes. But yeah, show me some giants and talk about the Nephilim theories. Enough with how slaves used ropes and pulleys to build the pyramids. No one believes that shit. Giants carried that shit. Giants Actual carried. skeletons as well. Found bones of gigantic men on the shore of Lake Alasi, El Yasi in Central Africa. There were giants in knowledge. According to the book of Enoch, see, I need to go read the Bible again. This is what I'm thinking. Like, I need to get the one that you can translate and, like, the Strong's Concordance and, like, mm -hmm. a, a raw Bible and go and read, like, the book of Enoch. Because there's two ways to read the Bible. As an archaeological text that needs to properly be interpreted, a historical record of origin, and also... Um, so you can get the power of God so that somehow he'll take care of your car note because I'm believing in Jesus. That's the wrong way to read the Bible. Right. So the book of Enoch, God was angry at the fallen angels partly because they disclosed certain classified information to humans. Yeah, you see, he was angry because they gave humans the secrets. Ancient world associated demons with special esoteric knowledge and with superior intelligence. The word demon in Greek comes from the root word knowledge or intelligence. Hmm. Scriptures also testify to the fact that demons have access to knowledge and information denied to ordinary mortals. Whoa. We read in the Gospels how they recognized and acknowledged the deity of Christ when humans seemed totally blind to the fact. When the Gadarene demoniac saw Jesus, he fell down before me and cried out, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, the, thou Son of God most high? These demons recognized Jesus at the beginning of his ministry, at the beginning of his ministry, way ahead of his own disciples. So the mm. demons, like, knew what was up from the get-go. Hmm. 
hmm. they gave away secrets. And who did they give those secrets to? People that were probably little agents for what was early Rome and the Vatican. Probably. You know what I'm saying? Probably have those secrets in the Vatican still. And that's why they're so satanic in their design and in their practice and shit, because they are. They come from the fallen angel bloodline of shared secrets, and they're manipulating it evilly. So maybe these UFOs are, like, the originals coming back. <laughs> There's been a lot of uh, a lot of activity over the past year with that, yeah. so maybe they know we're about to yeah, it's coming go off the cliff as a as a species. So and the information check on us being confirmed from the Pentagon, which is the center of a pentagram. True, the sacred shape. It just so happened to put a pentagon and the phallus, the Greek phallus. <laughs> I mean, all that stuff is so weird. So strange, man. I'm gonna definitely look into more more into this, so that we can, yeah, di dive a little deeper in this. But yeah, this is fucking crazy. Yeah, let's get into Hollow Earth next episode. Yeah, let's do Hollow Earth next episode. I gotta um, start wrapping this one up for this week because uh, we started a little. Well, my fault. But we started a little late today. That's cool. It's getting a little hot in my room here. I don't have AC. I got a little fan. So shit. Um, so Hollow Earth, this article is pretty badass, and the Mega Omega conspiracy is badass. Can, can we fit all that in one episode? It's a lot of research. Um, let's just let's commit to Hollow Earth, and I'll see what I can get out of that. Because I still got, I'm still working. I'm not okay. So. Yeah, let's do Hollow Earth, and then we can probably do part three where we get into the Nephilim and the giant Denisovan shit. Cool, I'm down just, with that. We'll milk it for the next few episodes. Okay. This stuff is like fucking amazing to me. This giant stuff. So like, I really want to go dig more into this. Yeah. All right, man. Well, well don't we forget can, to check man. out our bands. Don't forget to check out Golgothan on Twitch. Yep. On yep. Bandcamp, we are. Spotify. We can officially announce we are now signed to Lacerated Enemy Records. So badass, man. How's that record label? Um, I mean, it, it's it's cool, man. Um, He's uh, giving us pretty much full control to do whatever we want, and that's all we really wanted, right? And we really just need him for the promotional stuff. Cool. And he's, getting, he's already doing good with that, so. Yes, congratulations, yeah, dude. Thanks, man. Thanks. Record label, new gear. But yeah, go check out uh, Go check out our bands. Um, tune in next week. We're going to get back on the – we're going to get back on this where we're doing it on a – weekly basis again so yeah. sorry for the delay everyone but we had a major life a couple of major life events going on dylan starting a new job me having a kid so um hopefully you forgive us for for being gone for like six weeks but we're back at it back at it back at hollow it earth, hollow earth coming at you next that's right and us too because i haven't i don't know a lot about it um yeah i'm pumped about it i mean i sent you that uh google earth thing of that of that oh, hollow earth shit. portal how fucking yeah, crazy was that man bring that up on the next episode <laughs> i'm gonna show um, you guys a crazy picture yeah that's insane also i was pushing a live record but we can't release it because our new record isn't out yet but we do have an acoustic release on youtube six songs acoustic mandolin only stuff from our previous record which we're still rocking so that's up youtube uh, it's under playlist Alfred and the Ted Naders live at Herman's Hideaway. Fuck yeah. All right. No record label though, in due time. That's badass, man. Thanks, man. You guys are going to get like a shit ton of plays and videos and royalties, CD sales, <laughs> merch. Sales. Whatever, bro. I, I don't think. Uh, well, we, we are uh, our last show, we fucking basically sold out of merch. It was crazy. So, oh. yeah. But yeah. Um, for uh, more merch soon uh, when we re-up on that and uh, we're actually going to have when we put the record out we'll actually we're, we're doing actual records so okay that'll be cool too so if you want to get yeah vinyl so if you want to get a copy of our shit on vinyl look out for that too cool man awesome congratulations bro that's fucking awesome
Thanks, man. I want to get Death of Skepsis cracking. I haven't gotten I got able to gear do now, drum so. tracks. What's up? I got the gear now, so let's make it happen. Yeah, I got to do my drum tracks, so I'm, I'm trying to get into that. I'm just trying to finish the Son of a Gun record and the Alfred record as a production to, just to get that out the way because those are time consuming. Yeah, well, the Son of a Gun record sounding good. I got that. a new I got a new mix. I learned sidechain compression, and I think the snare and the kick are cutting through better. And I turned the toms up, and they're loud, so it's sounds even a little better than the last time you heard it. I mean, it's already sounding pretty good, man. So I'm proud of the proud of that. Proud of you. Thanks, man. Thanks, appreciate it. Oh, and the Mac Mini is fucking rocking hard. Like I'm doing all kind of shit. Nice. Just let the song play and tweaking everything. I get a beach ball every now and then. But it's rock. Yeah, that's fucking all. I'm glad to hear that, man. Yeah, it's it is like a motherfucker. It's badass. <laughs> well, fuck right, yeah, man. bro. Back See you next podcast. week, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be back happy. podcasting. I'm happy about Lillian. I'm happy about your record label and all that shit. That's awesome. Yeah, man. I'm happy to hear about your new job, too. Thanks, man. Uh, can I show you one last thing? Yeah. Speaking about new job. Um, so... You see this? Uh huh. Okay, so so that's Rogan's special he did at Comedy Works, the downtown club, and I've been helping renovate it uh, for a couple of days. Okay, so those drapes, we're using them in the back. I got a picture with those drapes. The actual drapes he used in the special. Oh fuck yeah. I can't. Kind of, if you're showing me a picture, I can't see it. You can't see it. Oh, oh, oh! oh. Sharing the Finder window. Okay. Okay. Here we go. My bad. Okay, so here's the Rogan's drapes in the back, right there. Oh yeah. And then she caused them the rogan drapes she puts them at the exit but those are it dude ah uh, that's fucking awesome man yeah and then this picture um is the actual spot the actual urinal that joe rogan peed in so super awesome dude super cool job oh my god <laughs> that's a great picture dylan that should, that should be the background picture of next podcast Okay. Yeah, okay. I can the make that shot. The urinal shot, yes. I can make that up. All right, man. Good podcast. All right, bro. Next week, for sure. Later, man. Later, Later. everybody. It's I will scream. I will cry. I will dream.